Greetings, I'm Barrent and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today we're going to be continuing our playthrough of Aliens, another glorious day in the core. We are entering the reactor room. This is like the key pivotal moment in the Aliens game that I'm just excited to get to. Not to mention this is one of my favorite parts of the entire movie. So we're going to go ahead and see the mission set up for this one. We're going to look at our characters and then we're going to go ahead and delve right into this mission. Now in this mission we're going to try to rescue the people that have gone in here. Those poor colonial marines have basically been sent in by Gorman who doesn't have a clue as to what's going on. Ripley's telling him to get out of there. Things go out of control. Nothing's what they're expecting and the next thing you know the APC comes crashing through the wall and we have to get our Marines safely back to this APC and out of here before the aliens take them out. Now of course in the movie it didn't go the greatest for them. <laughs> Hopefully we can do a little bit better. At least that's our plan and if you're excited to see if our characters can do that then I need you to meet me at the co-op shop. This second mission is called Escape. So like I said, we have to get our Marines out of the reactor room before more of them die. Let's go ahead and read through all the different parts of this mission so that we know what we're facing. Our mission goal, of course, is to win. And to win this mission, the trapped Marines must get back to the APC and exit the board at the extraction point. The extraction. Models can exit the board at the extraction point at any time. Now, there is a computer token. This token indicates a computer that characters can interact with on the board. And just like our previous mission, a character in a space next to the computer token may take an interact action to perform a tech test. If they pass, they may look at any one face-down blip token. There, of course, is a failure action. It says, game over, man. The mission ends in failure if all the trapped Marines are killed or captured. Once all surviving characters move onto the exit token, the mission ends if at least one of the trapped Marines exited the game board, the mission is successful. Otherwise, the mission ends in failure. Similar to their last mission, we have a motion tracker deck and we're going to shuffle three random threat level one and three level threat two cards together and set those six cards aside for the moment. Then we're going to shuffle the rest of the motion tracker deck together and we're going to place those six cards back on top. So it's very similar to what we did in the first one, but there's less easier cards on top. Then of course, drawing motion tracker cards, we're not going to start that until turn two. Now in the last one, we at least had three turns. The campaign notes are pretty much exactly the same as our first mission. If you succeed in the mission, you can continue to the next mission. However, depending on how things went in this game, you might have fewer resources to work with. Follow the instructions below prepare for the next mission. So we're going to go through those once we succeed with this mission. You like how I said once we succeed? I guess I don't plan on failing, that's for sure. There is one additional rule for the mission escape. It says normally a character must immediately stop its move action if it enters a space next to an alien model or a blip token. However, in this mission, you can move past alien models. As soon as a character enters a space next to an alien model and wishes to continue moving, roll a marine die. On the result of a six or lower, the character may pass by unharmed and complete the rest of its movement. Otherwise, the character stops and loses all further actions this activation. You only only need to make the roll once per movement action no matter how many alien models you are moving past during this action. So if at least you roll it once, you can run by as many as you want, which is actually a, not a bad strategy. Hmm, we'll see if we put this to use during our game. Now at this point I have panned out quite a bit because I just wanted to show you the characters really fast. Because a lot of it hasn't changed, I did make a few modifications. Hicks is exactly the same as he was. Vasquez is a little bit different. I took her arc welder off. I don't think she's going to be using it while they're in the reactor room. I've kept Hudson the same except I did give him some grenades. Frost is exactly the same. I switched up Gorman's main weapon. He no longer carries his uh, pulse rifle because he only has a four aim dial. 
that pistol is actually pretty good for him. It actually says as a backup weapon, this weapon always hits on a roll of three or less. So after he makes his first act attack action, he's already at a three. And if you have to go any lower than that, with a pulse rifle, it'd be even harder to hit. So instead, I can go ahead and always hit with less than three with this weapon. Also, it says after you take an attack action with this weapon, you may exhaust a card to make a second attack with this weapon. So unlike full auto, it can at least do, a, I guess you could say, kind of a burst attack. And then other than that, the only other things we have is Ripley. Ripley has taken the Arc Welder. It's up here because she might use that. And Newt doesn't have anything. Though, if we wanted to, Newt does have two spaces for equipment if we want to equip them on there. But remember, the more cards we equip on our characters, the less we have in that Endurance deck. And if that goes out and into the discard pile, the entire Endurance deck and Exhaust pile, we lose the game. So I don't want that to happen. So I've, again, there are spots on these guys where I probably could put something, but I decide against it. I guess there is one other thing I want to say. I did give two flares to Gorman. He has two of those flares. In case we need to manipulate that deck, the flare actually worked out pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and keep two of them on him. Now I do want to explain the board a little bit. This is the reactor room. These are all our spawn locations for our aliens when they come in as blips from the motion tracker cards. We also have our APC up here. There is a computer token right here. That computer token is the one that allows us to look at blips on the map. Now we're going to go ahead and set up our characters and our characters are set up very interestingly. We're going to be putting the Marines here, but over here, Newt, Ripley, and Gorman, they're actually in the APC along with Burke, but he's not in this campaign as a character. They're actually in the APC. All the Marines are over here. So we're gonna set our Marines over here and then Newt, Gorman, and Ripley are gonna be placed in there. Also, we are going to place random blips right in this area here. These are the ones that Hicks and Hudson were seeing on their motion tracker, but they didn't know where anything was. And of course, here's the stairwell in the movie. Again, if you haven't seen Aliens, stop this right now. Go watch it right now. It's a fantastic movie, and I'm going to say it in every video. This is where a lot of action happened right at the beginning, and then things really started heating up, and now they have to get out. So there's a little air shaft here, or stairwell, which is pretty cool, that they actually have our Marines starting right next to that stairwell. The action really started in the movie. So let's go ahead and set our map up very very much, well, actually exactly like it is on our mission sheet. We do have Ripley, Gorman, and Newt. We're going to go ahead and set them here. Gorman is watching all their vitals and everything that's going on on this view screen here. Ripley is pretty much right next to him, telling him, hey, you got to pull your team out, but he's not listening. Actually, they got to move them over here. Sorry, I had them over one square too far. You got to pull your team out, but he's not pulling them out fast enough. And now they've figured out that they're going to retreat. So we're going to see if they can make it. And we have Newt here, of course. She was actually hiding in a little cubby hole the whole time on the APC. And as you can tell, she's as close as you could possibly get that exit square without actually standing on it, which is pretty awesome. Now, in first turn, I could just walk her right off if I want to, but she could do some actions for us. So I am going to keep her out for quite a while. Now, of course, we do have our four Marines. We only have four. This is going to be pretty tough. And that's all you're ever going to get in this scenario. It's sad that three of them start up there, but you only ever get a group of six whenever you play the game, no matter what. Of course, the expansions do have the ability to add eight people, but that's only for certain scenarios, not for the main campaign. We're going to go ahead and place our characters. I'm going to place Vasquez. I think I'm going to place her right here. I think that's where I can place her. No, I have to place her within three squares of this. One, two, three. So I have to place her right there. Vasquez is going to go right there. I'm going to throw Hicks, I think, right next to her. And then we're going to put, oh no, actually I'm going to put Hicks behind. I'm going to put Hudson behind him and I'm going to put our flame through and up here as well. Just in case some aliens get pretty close, he can flame them. So there, our Marines are all set up. We have our characters in the APC. I did have to move this over one. I had it placed incorrectly. And I think we're going to be all set to go. All we have to do is place our blip tokens. So I'm going to randomly grab some blips from our blip pool and place them out here. I'm going to place one here, one here. And then we're going to continue placing our blips. We're going to place one, I think, right there. And we're going to place some right behind this wall over here. I'm going to go ahead and check this as soon as I get these all placed. All right, there we are. I did pretty good. I actually only misplaced one. I misplaced this blip. That blip goes right there. All right, our blips are out. Our characters are placed, and we are ready to start our mission. And, of course, we are going to start on turn one. And Hicks is going to go ahead and grab the token and decide who he wants to go first. Now, of course, we can't get too ahead of ourselves. Before we move into our first turn, I do have to create a motion tracker deck. So I've taken three of the level ones and three of the level twos, and we're gonna shuffle those together, and then we're gonna place them right on top of this other deck here that I've already shuffled up. So let's go ahead and give these a quick little truffle shuffle here and put them right out on top of that deck, and they're all set to go. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our first turn.
Hicks is going to go ahead and pass this over to Vasquez. I've got a plan. We'll see if it's any good. The first thing she's going to do is on activation, she's going to reveal a card and see what happens. Of course, she first has to set her aim dial, but it already starts at 8 because of the first turn. So we're going to go ahead and reveal a card. We have found a weapon. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. We get to go ahead and take an aim action, which means we get to move our aim dial up 1. And since we revealed this card, we're going to put it back underneath the endurance deck below, underneath that reshuffle card because all we do is reveal it. We're not exhausting or anything. We're just revealing that card. With Vasquez's first action, she's going to go ahead and move one, two, three, four, right to here. And as she gets to that location, she's going to be able to see some of these blips. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what she can see. Now remember, line of sight is from any part of your square can touch any part of the other two squares. And I think she's going to be able to see both of these squares. Yeah, she can see both of them just from that corner. And that's fantastic. Now, blips and aliens do not block line of sight when it comes to seeing or shooting or anything like that. So in in essence, I could take out this token, if, or this alien group, if I wanted to, firing straight through that one. But we're going to go ahead and just reveal what we see first. We have found one alien right there, and our second one is, oh, wow, look at that, two one aliens right off the bat. Wow, I can't get any luckier than that. That was pretty awesome. Sadly, I was planning to mow down a whole bunch of aliens with that smart gun, but that's okay. Two is better than none. I'll take it. So we're going to go ahead and put these back into our blip pool. And then we're going to go ahead and see if we can take these aliens out with that smart gun. Now the smart gun, of course, itself has to exhaust three cards when you take the attack action with this weapon. Now, of course, Vasquez doesn't have to do that. Her special passive power allows her to only have to exhaust two cards from the endurance deck instead of three. So we're going to go ahead and put those in the exhaust pile. Now, of course, this weapon is allowing us to roll two dice and you get to discard the highest result. I can't also equip a backup weapon with her, which is why I don't have one, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead, take our two dice, and see how we do. Now, normally I roll like in a dice tray or anything, but this game only has a couple dice you roll every once in a while, so I'm just going to go ahead and roll them right here. We're able to take out the first alien, and this gun does have full auto, which says that I can exhaust another card to take another shoot action if I want to, or another attack action. Now, before I do that, I do have to tick her dial down to eight. So now she has to get an eight or less in order to take out one of these aliens. Let's see how she does. She got a five and a five. I can discard the highest die, they're both the same. And we're gonna go ahead and take out our second alien. That was a really good turn. She took out two alien blip swarms already before anything really happened to our guys. That's the end of her activation. We've exhausted three cards, but that's okay. That's what they're there for. She now gets to activate another Marine. She's going to go ahead and activate Frost. Because she's only a private, she only gets to activate one Grunt. One, two, three, four. Well, I have to go one, two, three, four. And then one, two. She, he's going to go ahead and move up to there. That's going to be where he is. Because, of course, now I think he can see this blip token right here. Yes, he can. So do I really want to do that? When I do, this blip token is going to turn an alien group, and it's going to move six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, right up to us. So maybe it's not wise to see that blip token yet, but we have to get moving. We have to get moving. So we're just going to go ahead and do it. He's going to go ahead and reveal the blip token. Come on, be a one. Oh, it's a three. All right. So we're going to have a lot of aliens coming at us, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and place them down right where that blip token was. We're going to put them right here. Of course, I put two tokens and then put an alien on top to symbolize the alien swarm that is standing right here. That's the end of Vasquez's activation. We're now going to move over to Hicks. Moving the token over to Hicks. Now, of course, if you're playing more than one player game or two players even, this would be passed to the left. Sadly, since I am playing two players, the left doesn't really matter. It's always going to go back and forth between these two characters. But we're going to go ahead on activation. You may draw an endurance card, and you bet we're going to draw an endurance card because it works with his passive power. Let's see what we have found. We have found, or if we'll play something else, just deal with it because she's sick of Hudson. She goes pull up a map or something. Discard a card from the top of the endurance deck to shuffle a hazard card on a character into the exhaust pile. Oh, wow, that's really good. Okay, hazard cards are absolutely terrible, and we don't want to deal with them. So we're going to go ahead and keep that card. Hicks is going to go ahead and perform his actions. He gets two. We're going to go ahead and move him. One, two, three, four. And then he's going to move again. One, two, three to right here. I sadly can't shoot the alien because I only have two actions, which is sad news, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and activate 
two grunts. We're going to start with Hudson. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. He's going to move over to right here. I have a plan. It's probably pretty terrible, but I still have a plan. And just to be on the safe side, I don't think he's able to see any of these blips now. They're way behind this wall. He's not going to be able to see any of those blips. Now, if you notice, this map actually doesn't have too many things that protrude around it, so it's pretty easy to navigate this map compared to the first one with the protruding walls that we uh, that you need to make sure you can't walk diagonally through. In this one, we can move diagonally because this is a solid line right there. So if we wanted to, we could come across this line. All right, that's the first two, or he moved his first Marine, and, or Grunt, I should say, I'm sorry. We're gonna go ahead, okay, this guy's gotta stand on here better. Come on, stand there, there we go. He, we're gonna go ahead and activate our second Grunt. The first Grunt he's gonna activate, or the second one, I should say, is going to be Newt. But before we do that, we do have to take Vasquez's attack dial and move it down to seven. I have to remember to do that. That's one of the things that could be easily forgotten in this game is when you take an attack action to forget to move your aim dial. So that's one thing I have to keep on remembering about my to do in my and also the other thing is exhausting the right amount of cards when you make attack actions. It's another one I have to work on. Those are two of the hardest mechanics to kind of keep on remembering over and over as you get into the fray of this and the fun of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Newt. She is going to do a rest action. Now, if a hero character takes a rest action, I can draw up to two cards and then I can receive cycle up to three cards. Now those are two cards from the endurance deck you draw. And then you can recycle up to three cards. Now if a grunt character takes a rest action, they recycle three cards in the exhaust pile but do not draw cards. Remember, grunts are not able to actually have cards in their hand. Now we only have three cards in our exhaust pile, so we're going to go ahead and recycle all three of those cards. That's a great way to keep this endurance deck from running out. So that's her first action. Sadly for her second action, again, I don't really have anything I think she's going to do. I think she's going to wait right there. Gorman, on the other hand, since there are no cards in the exhaust deck to go ahead and recycle, he's not going to take a rest action. He is going to use this computer, and he's going to go ahead and do a tech test to see if he can see some of these awesome, what do you call them, blips. So we're going to go ahead and look at him. He's got a five tech. I'm going to do this twice, so I'm just going to go ahead and roll these two dice. I should do them one at a time, but for recording purposes, I'm just going to do all of it right here, and then we'll go check out the blips for every one I get. I got, well, I got none, so we're not going to check out any of them. <laughs> Two sevens. All right, Ripley is going to do a move action up to this computer, and then she's going to go ahead and do a tech test as well. Her tech is also five, so we're going to go ahead and roll. She at least got one, so apparently she can see what's going on on the screen, but, you know, that kind of makes sense. Gorman has no idea what's going on. He's pretty much just a bowl of jelly right now trying to figure out what's going on inside the reactor room and what's going on with his Marines, but Ripley knows what's going on, and she's going to go ahead and take a look at a blip. Now, which one of these blips should I look at? I'm going to go ahead and look at this blip right here. Oh, wow, we got to prepare for that. All right, that's five aliens. Oh my gosh, I don't even know what these are yet, but we're already dealing with five. Now that the Marines are done, we're going to go ahead and activate our alien phase. So first we're going to activate aliens. We only have one out there, but of course it is a group of three. And it's going to move towards the closest Marine. One, two, three, four. And then it's going to stop right there as soon as it gets to him, right in front of Hudson. Now that this alien has landed in front of Hudson, I am allowed to make a defensive fire action. This allows all characters that are up to four space and end within line of sight of the alien, I can go ahead and shoot with defensive fire. Starting with the character closest to the alien, which is going to be Hudson, we're going to go ahead and start taking normal attack actions against these aliens. Now, of course, I still have to exhaust the cards, and I also have to go ahead and move their aim dial. So since it's landing in front of Hudson, Hudson's going to go ahead and take his first attack. He's got his M41A pulse rifle, so I exhaust a card when you take an attack action with this weapon. So we're going to go ahead, exhaust our top card from our endurance deck, and we're going to go ahead and roll a die. His aim die is at, dial, sorry, is at six. So we're going to roll it up. I need a six or less. Wow, a ten. All right, so he has failed. So he did not hit this alien. That's terrible. Oh, come on. If we don't get this alien out of here, I guess Hudson might be, he might meet his fate here. The next person I'm going to have go is going to be Hicks. Hicks is also able to see within line of sight and he can go ahead and make an attack action because he can 
attack from right there to there. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, Frost, of course, is not able to make a defensive fire, but that's okay because we look at the flamethrower. His flamethrower is actually cumbersome, which means he cannot use this for defensive fire. Of course, he did have his pistol in his backup, but I really thought hopefully these three people can take this, this alien out or else we're in big trouble. Now, I do have to tick down Hudson's dial to fives because in case somehow we kill these and some more up here, which I don't think is going to happen to get us, I still have to do that. We're going to go ahead and attack with Hudson, H or Hicks, sorry. Hicks has his M41A pulse rifle. He is also going to go ahead and take an attack action with this. So he's got an aim dial of seven. We're going to exhaust a card and we're going to roll our die and see how we do against this alien. Oh my gosh, another 10. Oh, that's amazing. All right, so we again have failed to hit this alien. Oh my gosh, these dice are like totally against me. All right. This is absolutely amazing. We're going to go ahead and put this down to a six. And then we're going to go ahead. We have one person left, and that's Vasquez. Vasquez is going to also go ahead and use her smart gun. Now, I have to exhaust two cards when I attack with the smart gun in a defensive fire. And she at least gets to roll two dice, and she needs a seven or lower in order to hit one of these aliens. And she got a six or a two, so I can remove the highest die. She's going to go ahead and take out one of the aliens from the swarm. At this point, I can continue firing at this. The defensive fire is firing an attack action, which this gun has full auto. So it's going to go down to a six. I'm going to go ahead and exhaust another card to activate my full auto. Roll two dice with my smart gun. I got a star and a nine. We're definitely getting rid of the nine. And we're going to go ahead and remove this alien token from the board. I'm going to continue with my full auto by dropping our dial down to five. Okay, come on, Vasquez. Let's take them all out. Exhaust a card and see what we do. We are able to... No, we did not take him out. He got an eight and a seven. She has finished her actions. That's it. So we're going to drop her dial down to four. And at this point, now the alien gets to make an attack. So at this point, we are going to roll our marine die and go against him. Hudson's defense value of five. So he's got a defense of five, so he has to roll a five or lower on this die. And if it's any indication of how he just shot the gun, I'm kind of worried. Oh, he got a one. So he not only defensively rolled, he was able to dodge out of the way of the alien. Now, if the result is actually equal to or less than my melee skill, I'm actually able to kill the alien. So somehow I managed to dodge out of the way and I must have stuck my pulse rifle right in his mouth and got him. So we actually killed the alien even though it was coming at us. Oh, wow, way to make up for your failed attack cuts and that was an amazing defensive roll. Now, if we had not killed any of those aliens and that was still a group of three, I would have had to add three to that, uh, to that defense roll, bring it to a four, so of course the melee wouldn't have happened. But even if we would have been able to melee that group of aliens, you still would only take the t one of the tokens off. You wouldn't remove the whole group. Every time you actually hit an alien, just kind of remove one of those. That's the way I think about it. So he had he did phenomenal. We're going to go ahead now and move our blips. Now, all these blips are on this tile over here. So I'm only going to roll one alien die, and we're going to move all the blips with that alien die. So let's see how this goes. We're moving them one square. Oh, I wanted them to move way farther than that. All right, so this one moves one one and this one just kind of stays there because you can't move past them you this kind of they're kind of stuck maybe i can move them a little bit better than that i can maybe move this guy down here this guy right here and this guy over one well that's not going to be fair all right we're just going to keep it like that oh now i mixed them all up <laughs> i mixed up all the tokens all right we're just going to keep it like that we're good all right but i don't know if this one should have moved down here because because of course they do try to get to the closest marine so one should have just moved up the other one should have moved over or down, and that should have been about it. But we're going to leave it like that for now, since I have no idea which one even the five is, so I'm glad I looked at the blips. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. All right, those blips have moved. They're done. Totally wish they would have moved a lot farther than that, but they did not. They have failed me. Thank you very much, blips. We're now going to go ahead and move into drawing our motion tracker cards. Remember, we don't do that until the end of turn two. We're then going to go ahead and resolve any finish effects. We don't have any. We are not victorious, but good news, we're not dead yet. And we're going to go ahead and do our cleanup, which really means we're just going to go ahead and move our dial to turn two, which means now at the end of this turn, we will be drawing those motion tracker cards. Wow, which could be pretty bad. Moving to the beginning of our turn, Hicks is actually going to keep the token this time. He is going to go first. He's going to first go ahead and reset his aim dial to seven. Then he may choose to draw an endurance card, and he is going to draw an endurance card. He has found go to sleep and don't dream. 
That sounds like a plan, especially in this movie. Recycle up to six cards from the exhaust pile. Recycle up to one card from the discard pile. Draw up to two endurance cards. Oh my goodness, this is an amazing card. These cards are all really good. All right, we're going to go ahead and keep both those cards, and we're going to move into our actions now. He does get two. For his first action, Hicks is going to move four spaces. He's going to move one, two, three, four to right here. I think that's going to be his plan. Nope, I think he's actually going to stop right here. I've got a really good idea. It might not be the greatest idea, but it might be a good idea. We're going to see. Now, of course, he does have line of sight to both of these blip tokens. So we're going to go ahead and see what these are. It's a two, and one of these is supposed to be a five. Yep, there's our five. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was somewhere. I couldn't remember exactly where it was going to be. One, two, three, four of these are going to go here, and we're going to put one of these right here, and then we're going to go ahead and place our alien models on top of those. They are ready to go ahead and eat us. And that's going to be fun. Now, I am going to go with my second action, and we're going to make an attack. I'm going to make an attack action with my M41A pulse rifle. I can exhaust a card and take an action with this weapon. Now, of course, he does have a passive power where I could go ahead and discard a card to go ahead and and let him re-roll his die once per turn. I could have done that back here on this defensive roll since I hadn't actually done anything. And I'm also going to realize now that I should move Hicks and not Hudson. One, two, three, four to right there. All right. Now it's actually Hicks, not Hudson. Maybe I should just read the bottom of their bases. Okay. There he is. And he's going to go ahead and take a shot with his full auto M41A pulse rifle by exhausting one card and making an attack roll. He needs a seven or less, and he got a two. We are going to go ahead and start taking out this giant swarm. That's going to be our plan. So I'm going to go ahead and remove one token from it. This is full auto, so I'm going to go ahead and make another attack, dropping my aim dial to six, exhausting yet another card, and see if we are able to hit it. I need a six or less this time. I got a four, so I was able to take out yet another token. We're going to remove that one from the board as well. Then we're going to drop this to five, continue our full auto attack. I don't see why not. Exhaust another card and see how this goes. We're going to go ahead and roll the die. We got a nine. Okay, so we missed. Now I could choose if I wanted to, to discard a card to go ahead and re-roll my die, but I'm not going to. I think we're doing okay. We were able to kill two with that pulse rifle, which is pretty good. It's better than any of the other pulse rifles in the reactor room because nobody had access to a pulse rifle in the reactor room, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and put this back. <laughs> they, they actually stole all the armor, all the, actually Frost was carrying all the magazines. We do have to take this down one more time. That's the one thing I have to remember to do. And usually I forget at the last attack action that I fail on, I forget to move the dial. He has finished one of his move, his, he has finished his activations. He gets to activate two grunts. The first grunt he is going to activate is Frost. Frost is going to come one, two, three, four to right here, and he's going to knock down Vast Gas on the way. And he's going to go ahead now with his second action and activate the flamethrower. And I would like to discuss this flamethrower. There's a lot going on on this card, and I want to make sure you understand how this works. It says, exhaust two cards to make an attack with this weapon. Choose a space that is two spaces away from your character and in line of sight. It's a space, not a, a character. If I was here, I could choose to attack this space if I want to. I don't have to attack a model on a space. It says a space. Then it says, I'm going to, of course, this space has to be two spaces from your character and in line of sight. I'm going to roll a die for each model and token in that space and within one space of it. This is going to probably be changed to and all adjacent spaces because one space of it kind of made it feel like you only get to shoot one other space to some people, including myself. This weapon always hits on a roll of seven or less. So this weapon is really, really good. So we're going to, of course, but you only fire it two squares away. So you have to get close to these aliens to do it. And if things go bad, that can be really bad. He's going to go ahead and fire now with his second attack, and he's going to need a seven or less. To, we're going to start here at this space is where he's going to target, which means he'll be able to hit this space and the blip behind it. And from what I understand, you're going to go ahead and reveal that blip if you're hitting it because you have to know how many aliens are there. Now, on top of that, I do want to mention one more thing. If I had moved Hudson down to here, or sorry, Hicks, if he had been down to here, and I would have chose this space, he would have been hit. I mean, he, he is within 
he would have been all adjacent spaces, so he would be actually attacked by the flame unit, which would be pretty bad. So I don't think I'm ever going to put a person next to that. So we're going to go ahead and roll our dice. He gets to roll a ton of dice, and he making an attack action, I have to go ahead and exhaust two cards. So we're going to exhaust our two cards, and on top of that, I do have to move his aim dial down from five to four because it's still an attack action, meaning I do have to lower my dial. Now let's go ahead and pick up our dice and see how we do. We're going to attack this one first. There are two aliens there. I'm just going to roll both dice and hope for a seven. Oh, we only got one of them. That's no good. All right, so there's one alien left there. Then we're going to go ahead and attack this swarm because it is adjacent to the space that I chose. And I have got a seven and an eight. Oh, no, I'm not doing good at all. We only got one of these guys. We get to roll one more time to see if we kill that last alien in the swarm. It's always a seven or less, so let's see. We got a seven. Wow, I can't believe how high these dice are rolling. All right, now I do get to reveal this blip from what I understand to be able to hit it because it is adjacent to that space. We have found another two aliens, so we're going to go ahead and place them on the board. I hopefully am not going to be having them there very long. Hopefully they're going to be incinerated by our flame unit. Let's go ahead and roll two dice and see if we can get a seven or less for these as well. We got a four and a six. We were able to destroy that entire swarm, so we're going to get rid of it. Oh, the flamethrower is awesome. All right, but of course, look at him. He's now in harm's way. Both these can come and attack him, and on top of that, he doesn't have any way to do a defensive fire with this flamethrower. All he has is a pistol, so there is some drawback to this weapon. If you're not able to take everything out with that flamethrower, it can be bad news city for you. But that's okay. With activating my second grunt, I'm going to go ahead and activate Hudson. One, two, three, four to right here. And he's going to go ahead and use his M41A pulse rifle as well. And he's going to go ahead and take his dial, which is at six right now. And he's going to exhaust a card and make an attack action. So he's going to roll up one die. He needs a six or less in order to hit. He got a four. So he's able to take out, let's take out this one. I should have probably said who I was firing at before I fired. We're going to go ahead and tick this down to five. This is a full auto weapon. I'm going to go ahead and exhaust yet another card to take another shot with this pulse rifle. Needing a five or less. Oh, we got a six. That's terrible. All right. Sadly, he has missed. That's the end of his actions. He's going to go ahead and tick this down to four. And we're going to go ahead and move into Vasquez's turn because we have activated both of our grunts and we have activated Hicks. But I don't think that was too bad. Look, we took out a whole bunch more blips. Vasquez is going to go ahead and take the token. She's going to go ahead and reset her aim dial back up to eight. And we're going to go ahead and reveal a card from our endurance deck and see what we get. We have got a piece of equipment, which means we are going to be able to recycle a card and draw a card. So we're going to go ahead and put this underneath and do some cards. We're going to go ahead and put our revealed card back on the bottom of the endurance deck. We're then going to go ahead and recycle a card from the exhaust deck. And we're going to go ahead and draw a card. We have found, we found a pistol. All right, sadly, I wish it would have gone in the reverse order. I would have liked having the aim dial, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and put this in her hand. We're going to go ahead and activate her. She gets two actions. She's going to move one, two, three. Let's see here. One, two, three to right here. Then she's going to move one, two, three to right here. And she's going to try to run past that alien. Remember, according to this mission scenario, I can roll a die. And if I'm able to get a six or lower on my marine die, I can actually run past these aliens. I got a one, so I can go ahead and run past them. I know it's not too far. I've only moved right here. But it's a little bit farther than where she was. So she was able to move one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four to right there. Those are both for actions. We now get to move on to our grunt that she can control. And our grunt is actually just going to go ahead and rest twice. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to go ahead and recycle one, two, three, four, five, six cards right back into our endurance deck, which is awesome. All right, that's the way to keep those out of the discard pile. We now get to activate our last two grunts, and Corporal Hicks gets to do it because he is the ranking officer. And he's going to go ahead and start with Newt. I should have actually said that Ripley was the one doing that one, and the Newt is going to also take two rest actions. She's going to go ahead and recycle the last set of our endurance cards back in to our endurance deck, or sorry, exhaust into endurance. There we go. Our deck is actually fully back to full power again, which is pretty awesome. But of course, I'm going to be starting to draw blip cards pretty soon. And some of them could even go attack that APC, which would not be any good. We are now going to move into our alien phase. So our aliens are going to go ahead and activate. Now, that's the only one there, and it's not a swarm or anything. It's just by itself. And before it does, it actually, I have failed miserably. I am a terrible person. Normally, you get to make your defensive fire, but I'm a Vasquez right next to him, which was actually a really, really bad move on my part. I totally failed to do that. This was a totally bad move. You don't get defensive fire if you're actually next to the alien when it activates. That's just how it works. So this was a bonehead move. I'm going to go ahead and roll up our die. 
we're going to go ahead and look at her melee or her defense value, which is a four, but she does have a two melee value, so there's a chance. We'll see how this goes. We're going to roll it up, and we got a seven. So we have failed our defense roll. Now, Vasquez does have body armor. If you fail a defense roll, reveal a card. So we're going to go ahead and reveal our card. We have found a, an event. So if we look at our body armor, it says an event. We get to re-roll our defense die. And we don't have to exhaust this. That would have only been if we actually got a weapon card. So we get to do re-roll this die. Come on, we need a good number. Okay, let's roll it so we can actually see it. Oh no, we got a six. We failed again. So that means Vasquez is going to be knocked down. And if she is not brought back up by any other means, she's going to stand up at the beginning of the alien phase unless there's an alien next to her. If it's the alien's turn and she is downed next to an alien, she's going to get carried away. Now, at any time, if I would actually roll a 10 with this die or with any number of additions to it, that character would have been flat out dead. Now, I do get to keep the body armor. Sadly, it just didn't help me for this one. And we revealed this card, so we're going to put this back underneath our endurance deck and continue on. That was a terrible, that was a terrible, terrible strategy, but my fault. Oh, totally my fault. I was just so anxious to get towards that APC that I totally forgot that I don't get to take defensive fire when you actually start next to an alien. All right, we're going to move into our drawing motion tracker cards because there are no blips on the board. Now, I could have manipulated this motion tracker deck, but this motion tracker deck is rigged with six, two, three level twos and three level ones. And I feel being able to draw those first would probably be a better plan than putting even some of those on the bottom and putting up even harder cards up there. We're now going to go ahead and reveal these cards. And in a two-player game, each character is going to reveal two cards. So I'm going to go ahead and take the top two, three, four, and reveal them one at a time. The first one is Alien Drones, starting in number one. Player must either discard one barricade in play or place a second blip at spawn one. If there are no barricades in play, the players must place this the extra blip. Okay, another critical error on my part. Sigourney Weaver, Ripley maybe should have barricaded the APC and I would have been okay with this card. That was another blunder on my part. All right, learning, learning, learning. All right, next one is inside the perimeter. Place a tunnel token in the square that is within line of sight of the next and next to this character. Reveal a card. Place one blip on the tunnel token. Place two blips on the every tunnel token. <gasps> all right, that's terrible. Maybe I should manipulate this deck. This is all really bad stuff. Alien Assault. If the spawn point already has a blip or alien model, this blip moves forward four spaces towards the nearest marine. All right. And last but not least, come on, something. Oh, my gosh, they're all aliens. Here they all come. Well, what do you expect? I'm in the, I'm in the nest. It says, if the blip is not placed in the spawn point, Within line of sight of a character, it immediately moves four spaces. So we're going to go re resolve these in the order that they were drawn. Our first one is our Alien Drones card. I don't have any barricades in play, which is a blunder on my part. So I'm going to go ahead and place one blip here and one blip here in number one. That takes care of that card. The next card drawn is there inside the perimeter. Place a tunnel token in a square that is within line of sight and next to this character. Now, which character is it? That's a great question. I should have actually been saying which character is drawing which cards because, of course, when you're playing with other players, each character player is going to draw their own cards. But when you're playing solo, you have to remember which characters are actually drawing these cards because they can affect you. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll a die to see who drew this card. Even it's Hicks, odd it's Vasquez. Let's see what happens here. Even, it's Hicks. So we're going to go ahead and take a tunnel token, and we're going to place this adjacent to him. In other words, they have come up right next to him. Very similar to the way Hudson met his end in the actual movie inside the, what is it, the med lab or whatever. All right, we're going to go ahead now and reveal a card. All right, actually it was an operations is where it was. All right, they were actually trying to get to medical. It says building better worlds, don't care about that. All I care about is that it is an event. So we're going to go ahead and put this on the bottom of our card because we are just revealing a card, putting it at the bottom of the endurance deck. We're going to place one blip on that tunnel. So we're going to go ahead and put it right here. It can now see everybody, so it's going to go ahead and reveal itself. Oh, good, it's only one alien. All right, that's awesome. Oh, I'm so worried another five popper would come out there. That'd be terrible. All right, we're going to put that one right there. That's the end of this card. Our next two cards are Alien Assault. If this spawn point already has a blip, move the blip, but it does not. We're going to go ahead and place the blip right there. Now the last one is going to be our Alien Lurker card. If this blip is not placed on a spawn point within line of sight of a character, it immediately moves four spaces. So we're going to place our blip right here 
and it is going to move four spaces towards a character. Now, you have to remember, these characters have a long way to go around. So it's actually going to go straight at this APC, which is absolutely terrible. One, two, three, four. This is the one thing I was hoping wouldn't happen because I, I really don't know if I equipped these people up here well enough. I don't think I did, and that's probably going to be real bad for them. I'm going to have to maybe barricade this door and hope for the best. With Vasquez being down, Hicks is going to go ahead and, of course, take the first token. I've got a plan. We're going to go ahead. He has his aim dial set to 7, and we're going to continue on. He could draw a card if he wants. I'm choosing not to draw an Endurance card. I've got a better plan with these Endurance cards. They might be... If I start using these to actually re-roll my dice, I'll draw more of them, but there are also some really bad cards in that deck. So drawing all the time sometimes might not be the best plan. We are going to be moving into turn 3. I should also have mentioned that. So there we are. Now, of course, this turn dial only is really just telling me the turn now. After we have started drawing our motion tracker cards, there's nothing else the turn dial is doing during this mission. Hicks is now, of course, going to have to probably take out this alien that popped up behind him. He does have an aim dial of 7, and he's got his M41A pulse rifle. So he's going to go ahead and take a shot with this. He's going to go ahead and exhaust one card to see if he can take this alien out. We're going to go ahead and roll our die. We need a 7 or less. And we got a 6. So he took out the alien. That's awesome. That's his first action. His second action, he's going to move 1, 2, 3. Let me see here. 1, 2, sorry. He's moved 1, 2. And now he's going to try to run past this alien. If he's not able to, this could be a real short trip. All right. He did it. So he goes one, two, three, four. I can move through Marines. I just can't end my activation on them. He's going to put his aim dial to six, and that was a fantastic turn for Hicks. I'm real proud of him. Good work, Hicks. Now he can activate two grunts. The first grunt he is going to activate is Ripley. Ripley is going to play her motion or medical scanner. It's going to cost zero cards to play. Action exhaust this card to stand up a knocked down character. So we're going to put this into the exhaust pile, and I'm going to stand up a knocked down character because that was a bonehead move on my part. <laughs> I totally screwed that up. That's her first action. Her second action, she's going to move back down adjacent to this door. We might have to barricade that door because his blip is coming. The second Marine that he is going to activate is going to be Hudson. Hudson's going to go ahead and he's going to try to take out that alien. He's got a aim dial of 5 and is also carrying a pulse rifle. So we're going to go ahead and exhaust one card to make our attack. Now, of course, Hicks being up here couldn't use his full auto because he can't fire through friendly, friendly figures. We're going to go ahead and see if he takes him out. He's got an aim dial of 6. I'm sorry, I forgot to reset that. And let's see how he does. Well, got a 10. Didn't matter. <laughs> totally missed. All right. He's also going to try to attempt to run past this alien. One. And then he's going to go ahead and roll his die. He's a six or less. He made it. Two, three, four. Down a little bit off screen. So he's gone a little bit farther. Now it's going to go ahead and move into Vasquez's turn. Who's actually up thanks to Ripley. Oh, what a great turn that was for us in a way. Wish we would have got that guy dead too. Vasquez's aim dial is reset to 8. She's going to go ahead and reveal a card and see what she got. She has gotten just an event, which means I'm going to recycle a card and draw a card. So the one that we were able to show is going to go right there, the revealed card. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to recycle a card by putting it underneath. Then we're going to go ahead and draw a card. And we have found just a pulse rifle. Again, I wish they would have gone in the other order. Wow, that's hilarious. Vasquez is going to use her M56 smart gun first here. She's going to exhaust not one, but two cards to fire this weapon. And she's going to roll two dice and hope that she hits. She needs to get an eight or better. That is where her aim dial is at. She got a seven and two. She has destroyed this alien. Now, of course, the aliens do have acid for blood. But talking to the creator, he did mention that they tried to work with a little bit of acid rules, but it just didn't work out the best they ever did. So the, how they did it, they kind of incorporated them into that defensive role that we make. Now, the expansion does have rules for Acid for Blood, just so you are aware that they did take that into effect when they created the game. Also, we're going to go ahead and do our second action, and that's going to be move. One, two, three, four. There we are. We're right there. Now we're going to go ahead and activate two of our Marines. The first one we're going to do is Frost. One, two, three, four. And one, two two, three, four. I'm going to go right there just in case something spawns in this area right here. I'm going to make sure Vazcas can shoot it without actually hitting Frost. All right. Yes, she can. Perfect. All right. 
we're now going to go ahead and activate the grunts that we didn't do during this turn. Now the only two left are Gorman and Newt. We do have four uh, cards in our exhaust pile. I'm going to have Newt take two rest actions. She's going to go ahead and put those back under the endurance deck, recycle those two cards. Gorman is going to use his flare. I think after seeing what happened last time, it is time to start using some of these things that can help us. You may discard this card to look at the top four cards of the motion tracker deck. You may place one of those cards on the bottom of the motion tracker deck, place the rest of the cards back on top of the motion tracker deck in any order. So we're going to go ahead and look at the top four, one, two, three, four, and see what we have found. And then our flare is going to decide what we can keep and what we don't. Overwhelming Horde. Guess which one we're not keeping? Each character in line of sight of one or more aliens just, yep, yeah, uh, that one's terrible. Alien Vanguard, what's this? Reveal a card. Place another blip on one or another blip on four. Okay, that's not too bad. Four is right here, I think, right? I think that's where four is. Yeah, that's totally fine. We'll keep four. The next one is Alien Vanguard at one. All right, one is over here. I'm okay with that one. And the last one is, oh, false alarm. This one's totally going on top. We're going to put this one on top, and we're going to deal with these two. This one is getting totally put at the bottom, right? Let's see here. It says put one card on the bottom, and the other one's on top in any order. Yeah, this one's going to the bottom. Really? This is a medium card? Look at this thing. Ugh, yuck. All right, we're going to put that right at the bottom of this motion tracker deck, and we're going to put these back on top. It doesn't really matter what the order is because I'm going to be drawing all three of them anyway. All right. But maybe it will. Let's see here. Let's look at these again. I don't think it's going to matter too much. I'm just going to put them back up on top in that order. We're going to discard this flare. Now that one I can't come back through recycling. So we're going to go ahead and move into our turn. I may have put that in the wrong space. I'll check the board. Gorman still has one more action. And the action he is going to go and perform is he's going to go ahead and do that tech action to see if he can look at a blip. Nope. He's not smart enough to look at a blip. Wow. He has no idea what's going on in here. Moving into the alien turn, there's no aliens to activate. So then we're going to go ahead and just move on to the blips. There are a million blips to activate on this board. There's nobody actually has line of sight. Actually, now that I think about it, Ripley may have line of sight to this blip. Nope, she doesn't. It's still behind this wall. Oof, got lucky on that one. We're going to go ahead now and move the blips. We're going to start over in this quadrant right here. We're going to move these two blips five spaces. One, two, three four, five around that corner because they're not protruding. One, two, three, four, five, just like that. Those two have moved like that. Next, we're going to go ahead and move the blip in this quadrant of map over here and see how far that one moves. That moves two, one, two. Now, at this point, I'm sure she can see that alien blip. She totally can. All right, let's see what it is. Oh, please don't be a five or this could be a real short trip. It's a two. All right, that's a little bit more doable. All right, we're going to put that back down here. Now I can remember where that token was. I think it was right here. If it's not, I'll make sure to put it in the right space in just a second. We're going to go ahead next and move that one. Let's see how far that one goes. One. Yeah, he can keep moving one. That's just fine. Okay, I did put that one in the right spot. We're going to go ahead and draw our motion tracker cards, and we have four of them. And remember, I have to actually pick who's drawing these cards this time. I'm going to have Vasquez be the first person to draw the cards. The first one she's going to find, of course, is our Recycle a Card. False Alarm. Fantastic. I don't have any cards to recycle. Totally fine. We're going to go on to the next card. We have found Alien Vanguard. Reveal a card, and if I place another blip at the spawn point two or place another blip at spawn point one. We're going to go ahead and place a blip token on one. We're going to reveal a card and see where our next blip token goes. We got a weapon. So sadly, if I had got an event, nothing else would have happened, but it didn't. We got an, a, a weapon, so we're going to place a blip at spawn point two. We're just going to go ahead and take a blip from our blip pool and put it right there. Now, we do have line of sight to this, so we're going to go ahead and reveal this blip token. We have found two aliens. Wow, it seems to be the name of the game, two aliens. All right. We're going to put them for that group of five. That was pretty massive. And right, we're going to put that one right there. We're going to go ahead and put this at the bottom of our endurance deck because we were just revealing a card. That one is done. We're going to go ahead and move on to our second one. Hicks is drawing these cards. He has found that other alien vanguard where we're going to place one token in number four. And then we're going to go ahead and reveal a card. I want to see an event. Come on, event or equipment. Yes, equipment. So that means nothing happens because that is not part of this card. We're going to put this at the bottom of the endurance deck. Discard this because just the one blip showed. Now, this is the one we don't know what it is. It's going to be bad news city. Let's see what it is. Alien drones. Three. We're 
You're going to spawn one at three. That's not a big deal. Players must either... Oh, no. Discard a barricade and play or place a second blip at spawn point one. All right. We don't have any blips. So we're going to have to place another one at spawn point one. So let's go ahead and grab this. Put it here. And then we place a second one. Players must place the extra blip. Yep, we're going to place an extra blip over on spawn point one. Something tells me I may have played the last drone card incorrectly. Let's go ahead and look at that. And if I did, we're just going to keep going. Okay, no, I didn't. It said spawn point one, and this one did say spawn point one. All right. I just wanted to make sure because this one is a little bit different. It spawned at three, and then it spawned point one. So we're going to go ahead and discard that. We have gone ahead and revealed all of our motion tracker cards. We've got a lot of blips out here, a few aliens ready to go, and we're going to move into our fourth turn. This is pretty awesome. Really digging this scenario so far. This is really cool. Trying to get these guys back as fast as I can, and these monsters are just going right at that APC. I'm really worried about what's going to happen up there. Hicks is going to go ahead and choose to have Basgas go first because, well, I have a plan. She's going to shoot an alien and start running. So she's going to go first. She's going to reset her aim dial. It's still at 8, but now she does have to do her on-active ability. She's going to go ahead and draw an Endurance card from Reveal an Endurance card and see what it is. It's a hazard. Oh, no, we haven't had any of these, and it's finally time one dead. It says place on your character. Each time your character activates, reveal a card. Lose an action this turn, exhaust four cards, or discard two cards and shuffle this card into the exhaust pile. Oh, this is terrible. So this has to be on her. It's not equipment, but I'm just going to put it there so it's in the shot. This Actually, you know what? I am just going to go ahead and put it right here so it's not mistaken as an equipment. I'm going to put it right there. So every time we activate her, she's going to go ahead and have to reveal a card. Now, lucky for us, she's already activated. She's set on activation reveal a card. So she's already activated. So I don't believe I'm going to be doing it at the beginning of at, during this turn, but any other turn from here on, we're going to have to do that. Now, since we've gone ahead and reset our aim dial, resolved on all on activation abilities and equipped our endurance cards, which we don't have any to equip or give to other people, we're going to go ahead and perform our two actions. I think the first one we are going to do is we are going to attempt to destroy this alien. So we're going to go ahead and see if we have line of sight. And we have to have any of our square touch any of that square without actually going through another marine square. And we do. So I'm going to go ahead and see if we can take this guy out. I'm going to go ahead and exhaust two cards. And we're going to see what happens. We're going to roll two dice, and we need to get lower than an eight. And, of course, we can discard one of our dice, our highest dice. Oh, good, we're going to discard this one. And that one is going to hit. So we're going to go ahead and remove that alien token, and then we're going to move her aim dial down to seven. At this point, we are now going to enter full auto mode, and we're going to go ahead and exhaust another card to go ahead and roll two dice and see how we do. We need to get lower than a seven on two. Well, that's not one. Oh, we got a five, though, so that's really good. We were able to take out this alien. He is gone. She was able to take out both of them. So she is now able to do her second action. She's going to move one, two, three, four. And now we're going to go on to our... Go ahead and resolving our grunts. Now, of course, I do have to go ahead and clip this to a six, and she's done. She can now activate one grunt. Before we activate our grunt, I did realize that I have moved these blips wrong. You may have noticed this as well. It actually is faster for these blips to get over to these Marines than it would have been to get all the way up to that APC. So instead, these blips are actually going to move one, two, three, four, five down this corridor, and this one's going to go ahead and follow. So these two are right there. And with the change of these blips and where Vasquez is, I believe she might actually be able to see these, at least this first set of blips. If we can draw any part of our square to any part of their square, we can see the blips. Actually, we might be able to see both of them. I think we do. I think we see both of those blips. Wow. Talk about real interesting line of fire. All right. I'm open this board. Might not be a little bit centered. There. I'll try it. Now it's more centered. Probably going to be the same outcome, but I'm going to check anyway. We see one. We see two. I would say we see two blips. All right, we're going to go ahead and reveal our blips. We have a two and we have a one. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put those aliens out on the board. Here's a alien with a one token, so that's a two. And then we have another one that's just hanging out. That's a one. Oh, no, his tail fell off. Oh, this happens all the time. I've noticed these tails do fall off quite a bit. I'll just have to glue that one back on. Not the end of the world. I've got more aliens. <laughs> this game came with a ton of them. So we're not too short on aliens. I'll tell you that. All right. Those two guys are ready to go. She's gone ahead and moved. So now we're going to activate our grunt. And I think it's going to be Hudson. Hudson's going to do a double move action. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
down to here. These are going to move six squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're totally fine. We're safe from them. We're going to go ahead now and move into Hicks's turn. Hicks is going to go ahead and reset his aim dial back to seven. And then he may, on his turn, go ahead and draw an endurance card. He is not going to do that. He's going to go ahead and perform his two actions. He's going to do a double move. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Down here with the rest of us with the rest of those people. Now, of course, he can perform two actions with grunts. He's gonna go ahead and use frost first. One, two, three, four, one, two, down to here. So that we're all kind of out of each other's line here in case we wanna to try to hit all these aliens. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, that's gonna be bad. He's gonna be able to attack frost. So we're gonna back frost up to there. See, got a little bit smarter this time. <laughs> I didn't stop next to aliens this time. All right, that's the first grunt. We're now gonna go ahead and activate another grunt. But before we do, we're gonna go ahead and play our event, just deal with it. Discard a card from the top of the endurance deck to shuffle a hazard card on a character into the exhaust pile. So we're gonna first have to exhaust two cards in order to play, just deal with it. Now we've pl played our card, we're all now going to go ahead and discard a card from the top of the endurance deck. So this is discarded. Did that cues just drop sharply while I was away? It says, play after a character fails a tech test. Reroll the test. If they fail again, exhaust two endurance cards. If they pass, drop to two endurance cards. All right, instead we have to discard this card, but that means we can go ahead and shuffle this back into our exhaust deck here. So this is gonna be shuffled into our exhaust deck and it, that's where it goes. That's the end of that. He has played his card. This now gets put into the exhaust deck. We're gonna go ahead and place that there. The only other thing I do want to do that I should have done is Hudson does have his motion tracker. I should have done this on his turn and we haven't done too much more. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna go ahead and reveal a card. It's a free action. We're gonna reveal a card and see what we have found. We have found an event. Okay, we've got an event which states that I am allowed to look at the top two cards of the motion tracker test, place one of these cards on the bottom of the motion track and one of them on top. So let's go ahead and see what two evil cards befall our heroes. We have Intelligent Foe, there's two of these. What's this? If there is one or more cards in the discard pile that are hazards, randomly select one card and shuffle it back in the exhaust pile. And two of these things are gonna spawn at number two, which is right here. That could be pretty bad. And then, oh my gosh, alien drone. Players must either discard one barricade in play or place a second blip spawn at one, which I believe is right here. Is this number one? No, this is number one way over on this side over here. All right, this one's not too bad. We're gonna keep, oh, they both spawn at two though. All right, but there's only one blip here. We're gonna go ahead and keep this one on top. We're gonna put this one on the bottom. Our revealed card is gonna go on the bottom of our endurance deck, just like that. And we're gonna go ahead and keep our motion tracker. I don't have to exhaust the card because I was able to do the top action. So that was good work, Hudson. You were able to take care of that. I still get to go ahead and activate another grunt. Hicks is gonna choose first to activate Newt. And Newt is gonna go ahead and do a double rest action. So she's gonna take the top six, one, two, three, four, five, six cards, leaving only one in the exhaust deck and recycle them to the bottom of our endurance deck. All right, now we have to decide what we're gonna do with the other two grunts. And of course, Hicks gets to make this decision and it's not gonna to be too tough because we are actually working together because I'm one mind and one body. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna probably use her first. She is going to, we need to barricade this or I have to shoot this guy. One of the two, I have two options. I don't know which one to do. I think what we're gonna do is we are gonna use our arc welder. This is gonna cost us one card. I'm gonna go ahead and exhaust this card from our action endurance deck. And then we're gonna go ahead, discard this card to barricade a door within one space of your character. All right, we're gonna go ahead and probably do that. I think that's our best bet because that way at least we're saving ourselves from this alien. And I'm now gonna do a move action to move over here. I'll try to explain why I did this. If I would have left her right here and maybe tried to fire action and failed and then do the barricade, that's great. But he could have ran up here and basically broke through the barricade and I would have had almost nothing I could do about it. She could maybe take a defensive fire shot, but it might not have been that great. From this point, if he breaks through this barricade, he's not adjacent to her, so he actually has to step into this room. And at that point, he could attack anybody and everybody would be able to take a defensive fire shot against him. So that's the reason I'm doing it the way I am. I'm gonna go ahead and discard our arc welder and that's gonna be the end of her turn. Gorman 
I guess he's going to go ahead and do one rest action, which will take the two cards in our exhaust pile and put them at the bottom of our endurance deck. And notice our endurance deck now says reshuffle. So we're going to place the reshuffle card down on the bottom of the endurance deck, and we're going to shuffle this endurance deck up because, well, that's what you're supposed to do. So we're going to give it a good old truffle shuffle. Now we're going to go ahead and just give it another couple cuts there and place it back down on top of our shuffle card. With his second action, we are going to go ahead and do a tech test to see if we can take a look at one of these blips. That's really all we have left to do. We got a six. We have failed. He did not do that, but he does have three actions. He's going to go ahead and use his flare. Is this a good idea? Oh, I'm not really sure, but we're going to do it anyway. Of course, I am discarding this card, and I don't know how many cards like this I want to discard. Now, at the end of our mission, we're going to be able to pull two cards back into our exhaust deck, but then only half of the cards after that are going to come back. So this might never be seen again, but we're going to go ahead and discard this card. Look at the top four cards in the motion tracker deck. I know we've already know what one of them is, but I am really doing my best to try to make nothing come out of this spawn point because it's going to go racing towards that APC until I can get my Marines around to about here. So we need to keep this as spawn free as I can. So let's go ahead and look at four. I'm going to keep three, put one on the bottom. Let's see here. Place one on the cards on the bottom of the motion deck and place the rest of the cards on back of the motion deck in any order. So let's go ahead and look at the four cards that we're about to have to deal with. Hopefully, I'm really hoping that none of them are going to be coming out of spawn number three. Now, of course, we know what the first one is. We already put it there. That's that alien drone. So we're going to put that one aside because we that one we are okay with. Oh, look at this one. He's got two blips. I'm a big fan of this. It's a lurker at number one, which is over here. It says... This, if this blip is not placed on a spawn point within line of sight of a character, it immediately moves four spaces. Okay, that's not the end of the world. Again, it's only one. Oh, no, this one might go on the bottom. Let's see what's happening here. Two, players must choose to either exhaust four cards or place one more blip at spawn three. That's three blips. That one might be going at the bottom. Not to mention it's coming out of number two, which is over here. Okay, again, that's not too bad, though. If this is a three, I might have to keep that. <gasps> False alarm recycle a card. Oh, we know which one we're getting rid of. This one is going away. Because two and one is okay, three is bad. So we're going to go ahead and discard, put this one, sorry, we're not discarding, we're putting this one at the bottom of our motion tracker deck. And now we get to put the other ones back in any order. Again, it's not really going to matter too much. I'll just put them in that order just like that. Now, of course, I am going to be drawing that card, and I don't even know what it is. So that could be really bad. I'm going to go ahead and put those out. Now, if I'd have been smart about it, I would have played my flare first. No, I guess it wouldn't matter. And then the motion tracker only would have saw the first top two cards. All right, we're going to go ahead and get discard our flare. That's the end of our flares. We don't have any more flares, so that's kind of bad. I just hope that last card isn't going to affect us too badly. Our Marines are done. We're going to move over to the alien phase. The aliens are going to activate. Oh, no, here we go. This one's going to go six spaces. One, two, three, four, and it's going to try to break through the barricade. Now, to see if an alien breaks through a barricade, we're going to roll that alien die. One, two, and three, it does not. Four, five, and six, it does. Now, it does state here, when it tries to break through a door, the alien models and blip tokens that must go through a barricade door in order to reach a character will stop in a space next to the barricade and will try to tear it down. So it has technically stopped moving. It's not going to move anymore, even if it breaks down that barricade. Let's go ahead and see what happens. We're going to roll our die. It got a two. It did not break through the barricade. Oh, that's awesome. All right. That's fantastic. It's stuck right there. I am still safe inside my APC. Come on, Marines. You've got to save those three. But of course, these Marines have their own problems. Here they come. One, two, three, four, five, six to right here. This one's going to move one, two, three, four, five, six right in behind it. All right, that's the end of our alien activation. Now we're going to go ahead and move our blip tokens. We're going to start with this map quadrant first. We're going to roll our die. They're moving five. One, two, three. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. I am going to reveal both of these blips because they are in line of sight of some of my Marines. We have another one. All right, we're going to put that guy right here. And then we have... A two. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. All right. I've only seen that five one time, and I hope I never see it again. All right. We're going to go ahead and put this guy right here. So we have more aliens coming at us. Let's continue moving some blips. The next set of blips we're going to move are going to be on this map tile over here. Let's go ahead and roll it up. Another five. Oh, terrible. All right. These are going to move. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. They're coming after our Marines, but they have to go up and around and down. So I got a little bit of time. Now this one, on the other hand, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, way too many. One, two, three, four, five. It's going to be going this way, vroom, straight up that way. Now, Ripley doesn't have any line of sight to, because that barricade is there, so the door is shut. So this blip is still a blip. And that's the end of our blips. Now we have to deal with those motion tracker cards. And, of course, we know what three of them is are, which is fantastic. We just don't know what the last one is. So let's go ahead and take a look. Our first one, of course, is that all clear false alarm. We don't have any cards to recycle, so we're just going to discard that. The next one is going to be our alien drones. We're going to put a blip at two. Players must either discard a barricade. I am not going to discard a barricade. I'm just going to place another blip token in number one. So we're going to place one here in two, and we're going to place another one over here in one, which is just kind of right off screen over here. The next thing I'm going to do is draw my next card. Of course, I do have, I can see that blip, so I should actually activate it. We're going to go ahead and see what it is. Oh, it's another one. Yes. All right, we're going to put this alien down right here. He is there. Another one. Wow. Lots of ones, I think. Next one is our alien lurker. If this blip is not placed in a spawn point within line of sight of a character, it immediately moves four spaces. All right, we're going to have to do that. We're going to go ahead and take our blip token. It is going to go ahead and spawn just right over here. One, two, three, four. It is standing right behind our second alien back here. I didn't move the camera. But I just want to let you know that's where it is. And our last card, this is the one we don't know about. Look at all those blips on there. Whoosh! We found hidden attack. Oh, here it comes. If this card's blip is placed on spawn points in line of sight of characters, discard four cards. Oh, no. If this card's blips are placed on a spawn point in line of sight of a character, discard four cards. Yes, it is in line of sight to a character. That's terrible. It's number two, which is right here. So first off, to place two blips, it's going to be here and here. Actually, I can choose where they get placed. I'm going to place them back here. I don't really need to see them if I don't want to. But now I get to see if I can see them. I bet I can see both of them. Yeah, easy. Boom, boom. We can see both of these. We're going to go ahead and spawn two sets of aliens. The first blip we're going to go ahead and look at is this one. It is one. All right, we're going to go ahead and place our alien there. And our second one is... Come on, something nice. Now one or two be now. Oh, a four. Here they all come. Okay, now we've got a lot of problems. We've got aliens everywhere. They're starting to swarm us. All right, we're going to go ahead and put our legless, our tailless one right there. All right, and that's the end of the <laughs> these evil tracking tokens or these motion tracker cards. These are the bane of my existence. All right, I do have to still complete this, though. If the card's blips are placed on a spawn point in line of sight of a character, discard four cards. So this card is terrible. Not only is it probably one of the most iconic moments in this entire movie because right, this is right after she says maybe they don't show up on infrared at all. And then look what's right behind her. Yep, not good for Dietrich. All right, but that's beyond the point. This does say if this card blip is placed on spawn point, character must discard four cards. Now, when you have to discard four cards, just the words discard four cards, these four cards can come from either your hand or your endurance deck. The first two I'm going to discard is I am going to discard the pistol and the pulse rifle. We're going to discard those from Vasgas, but we are going to keep Hicks's card and discard two other ones. That's the way that this is played. Now, if it did say you have to discard from your hand, then I would have to discard them from my hand. No ifs, ands, or buts. Now, if at any time there were no cards in the endurance deck and there were no cards in my hand, I would have to discard from the exhaust pile instead. And as I discard these cards, I'm just going to cry. And I'm going to cry even more. Oh, no. All right. Now, when you're discarding cards, if you discard, if you reveal a hazard while you're discarding, you have to actually go ahead and abide by the card. So we're going to reveal a card and see what happens. And guess what? There aren't many of these left, so I'm sure it's going to be the top part. So let's go ahead now and reveal a card. We have revealed a weapon. That's awesome. So this card's going to go on the bottom, and we're going to do what it says for Burke's treachery. Ah, oh, this guy. Okay. Burke is, a, is the corporate guy who's he's all about taking the aliens home. He has to exhaust eight endurance cards and then discard this card. So we're going to discard it and exhaust eight cards. Oh, that's terrible. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These eight cards just get exhausted. I still have to discard one more card. We're going to discard grenades. All right, those are going to be discarded. The exhaust piles there, our endurance piles here. Things just got a lot worse just from one card. That one card totally wrecked me. But that's okay. We're going to keep on going. 
Hicks is going to go ahead and retain his activation token. He's going to be the one that goes first. He's got his aim dial at seven. I can choose to draw an endurance card. At this point, I am going to draw an endurance card. Maybe we can get something really good. We have found a flamethrower. That's not as good as I was hoping. Flamethrowers are really good, but I don't want to equip it for four. That's quite a big cost to do it. I was hoping for a really cool card that I could play as an event. That's okay. I can use this one to activate his passive if I need to. Now there's a lot of aliens in our way that we have to take care of. And the first thing I have to do is I failed to realize that when I pawned the blip and brought it down, I was definitely in line to say to all my guys. So we have to go ahead and reveal this token. There is only one. Oh, that's awesome. All right, so we're going to go ahead and place one alien right here. He's good to go. That's awesome. And then we're going to go ahead and probably start taking some attack actions. It's the only thing I really think I can do here. We're going to use our aim dial, and he's actually going to start taking out aliens down here. I have faith in Frost. Frost, spoiler alert, I'm going to be activating him next. He has that flamethrower. I'm hoping he can take all of these aliens out. That's going to be the plan. So Hicks is going to start by first trying to take out as many as he can from down here. So let's go ahead and start shooting. He's got a 7 for his aim dial, and he has to go ahead and exhaust one card to fire his M. 4-1-A pulse rifle. Let's see how this goes. You know, seven or less. I got a seven or less. I'm going to take the one from the front. Whoops, I'm knocking them all down. We're going to take that one first, and then we're going to go continuing to fire. I'm going to go down to six, and we're going to exhaust yet another card from our endurance deck. This is going to be a pretty expensive turn, I think. I'm going to roll this up. I got a nine. I have failed. Once during my turn, I can go ahead and once exhaust a card from your hand to reroll Hicks's failed attack roll. We're going to exhaust this card to reroll his failed roll, and we're not going to use that die. We're going to use this die. Oh, it was equally bad. They're both nines. <laughs> that stopped his first attack action. He doesn't have anything else he can do unless I want him to try running up, but I don't want to run up. I have to take all these aliens. I don't know how we're going to do this. It's going to be bad news. I'm going to go ahead and do another attack action. And I'm going to exhaust another card from our endurance deck, and we're going to go ahead and take another shot down the corridor at these guys, and let's see how we do. We got a one. We did take out one of the swarm. We're going to keep on going. This is going to go down to a five. Nope. Let's make sure I do this correctly. Our first shot was a seven. We failed, or we got it. Six was a fail. Then I re-rolled the die, still failed, it should have gone to a five. Then I'm starting my attack action second one. Notice that's one of the hardest things that I think is to remember is when you fail to keep moving that dial. Now we're gonna go down to four and we're gonna see if we can keep on this streak of luck. We are gonna, oh, we gotta roll that, well I got a seven. It did stay in the picture, I didn't think it was going to. All right, we have missed, he's done. All right, that's the end of Hicks, Hicks is finished. He's gonna go ahead and put his pulse rifle over here. He gets to activate two grunts. First grunt he's activating is he is going to activate Frost. Frost is going to use his flamethrower. He's going to go ahead and his dial has been reset, so I haven't actually fired anything. We are going to take it down one for doing an attack action with his flamethrower. I have to exhaust two cards to fire this flamethrower. He's going to go ahead and discard two cards into the endurance deck. Now, he is going to go ahead and be able to target a square. I'm going to target this square within two squares of me and all adjacent squares. So we're going to hit these two right here, and I need a seven or less. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. All right, he still gets to fire at this one over here. Oh, wow, that was poor. All right, he's going to go ahead and do that again. We're going to go ahead and exhaust two more cards. Wow, that was something else. And we're going to go ahead and try the flamethrower again. See if we can get those two aliens. All right, let's see here. An eight and a four, but I got one. That's half the battle, I guess. And then we're going to go ahead and see if we can get the last one over here. We did. We got the last one. Oh, my gosh. That was something else. All right, we've got to put these guys back here. I knocked them over. All right, there they are. Now that's the end of his turn. He has activated. Frost is done. Now I do get to do my passive power. After shooting an M240 flamethrower reveal a card, I can go ahead and recycle it if I get one of those. Now, I fired twice, so we're going to go ahead and resolve the first one. It is an event. I get to recycle a card. That's awesome. I'll take the top card off the endurance deck and put it into our the bottom of our endurance deck. Sorry, exhaust deck, bottom of the endurance deck. There we go. Now I get to do it one more time because this is our second attack. We got another... Uh, event. So we're going to recycle a card. So I'm going to put the revealed card underneath and then the one from our exhaust deck underneath as well. Frost is finished. 
He has done everything he can. Wow, and it was not the greatest. All right, he took him two turns to take out two aliens with a flamethrower and either seven or less. Wow, <laughs> unbelievable. All right, that's the end of that action. Now I've got another person that can attack and that's gonna be how I can activate one more grunt. The second grunt that Hicks is going to activate is going to be Hudson. He's gonna go ahead and move up to here. And being there, he has clear line of fire to all of these aliens. So for his second action, he's going to go ahead and use his M41A pulse rifle. He's going to go ahead and see how he can do with this. His aim dial is set at 6, and we're going to see how good this can go. I need a 6 or less. Oh my goodness, this is terrible. All right, he totally missed. We're going to go ahead and put this down to a 5. And now <laughs> it does say on my M41A pulse rifle, after you take an attack action with this weapon, you may take an additional attack action using a grenade weapon equipped to this character. So I can go ahead and use the grenades equipped to Hudson. So Hudson's gonna go ahead and use these grenades. Let's go ahead and read it. Discard this card to make an attack with this weapon. Choose a space within line within four spaces of your character and line of sight. Roll for each model and token in that space and within one space of it. Very similar to the flame unit, so it's all adjacent squares. This weapon always hits on a roll of six plus. So from the way I've been rolling, I should maybe take out two if I'm lucky. All right, we're gonna discard this card. So I'm not gonna have this anymore, but we are gonna go ahead and fire these grenades. We're gonna go ahead and start right here. There's only one alien there, so we're gonna roll up. Oh, here we go. <laughs> What this alien? You know, I wonder if they weighted these dice in the alien's favor when they made this game. All right, we did take out that alien. That's awesome. Now we have a stack of four. One, two, three, four aliens here. Let's see if we can take some of these guys out. We're going to roll up two. We hit two of them. That's awesome. One, two, dead. We're going to keep on going. Come on, Hudson. Let's take out the last two. Oh, at least he got one of them. That's something. All right. He is done. He used his grenade and he used his pulse rifle and he moved. That was his two actions. He's done. Now we're going to move over to Vasquez. She's going to take our activation token and continue on with this attempted way of... <laughs> she has to take out these three aliens or we've got big problems. All right, let's see what she can do. We're going to start by resetting her aim dial to eight and then we're going to go ahead and see what we, could, we have to do our activation card. So we're going to reveal a card from our endurance deck and see what it is. Come on, a weapon, yes, that was exactly what I needed. Okay, we got a nine now. She gets to take an aim action and I have to go put this on the bottom of the endurance deck and we get to continue. All right, let's see what we can do with her. Vasgas has two options. She can use her smart gun, which is the only option really. She's gonna use that for sure. We're gonna go ahead and just exhaust two cards. I'm just gonna do that right now because I know that's my plan. We're gonna exhaust these two cards to fire. Now she has two options. One, she could move over here and take out this alien and potentially the other aliens down the road over there. Or I can stay right where I am and make a attack at both of these targets. Because if I look at my little line here, I do have line of sight to those two targets. So I could probably take out both of them. I think the best plan is to take out both of these and hope that when this guy comes up here, not only Frost, but hopefully Hicks can maybe take this guy out. Here's hoping. All right, we're gonna roll our two dice with our smart gun. I need to get a nine or lower. And I'm not gonna say that's a given because I could roll two tens. Let's see, we got a two and a one. We were able to take out one of them. I probably should have said which one I was firing at first. That's my mistake. I am gonna go ahead and tick this down to an eight and we're gonna continue firing. I'm gonna go ahead and exhaust one card to activate our full auto. Let's see how that goes. We were able to take them both out. All right, Vasquez lives up to her name here, taking out aliens, that's awesome. She was able to do that with her first action. She does have another action. Oh, this is tricky. I could go ahead and move. I'm gonna move right here. That's what I'm gonna do. So when this alien moves up, she could also help in being able to do a defensive fire against this alien when it attacks. She is now able to activate one grunt, and you got it, this grunt is gonna be Newt. Newt is gonna take a rest action. She's gonna take one, two, three, four, five, six cards from the top of the ex endurance or exhaust deck and put them on underneath the endurance deck. That's gonna be her two actions. Now, of course, I've got my last two characters here. He doesn't care about blips. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's gonna 
do that. And Ripley is also one, two, three, four, five, going to take a rest action. So all of our characters have taken rest actions, and three, I should say, up here. So we've got our endurance deck back. Of course, minus the cards I've had to discard during our game so far. With the Marines completing their actions, we're going to go ahead and move into the alien phase. So we're going to go ahead and activate our aliens. You may have noticed that these aliens were here. I had misplaced them when they kind of fell off, fell around a little bit. I did put them back where they're supposed to be. We're going to go ahead now and move this alien first. He's going to move up and attack Frost. Well, Frost is not totally defenseless. He's got an aim dial of three. He cannot use his flamethrower because this flamethrower is cumbersome. It cannot make defensive fire attacks, but he does have his pistol. So he's going to go ahead and use this. This weapon always hits on a roll of three or less. After you take an attack action with this weapon, I may exhaust a card to make a second attack with this weapon. So he's going to make an attack action with this, and he needs a three or less. Now notice, this is different from the pulse rifle. The pulse rifle states, exhaust a card when you take an attack action. So I'm not exhausting a card when I shoot the first attack with the pistol, but if I want to make the second attack, that's when I have to exhaust a card. So let's see how this goes. I'm going to go ahead and roll. I got a four. I failed. This is going to go down to a two. So now at this point, he's going to go ahead and exhaust a card to make a second attack with this weapon. Let's see how he does this time. He got a star. He was able to take out the alien. Way to go, Frost. He didn't even need the help from the rest of his team. He can do it on his own. His aim dial is now going to go to one. Your aim dial can never drop below one. It can never go higher than 10. Just want you to make sure you realize that. Now, we're going to go ahead and continue moving the rest of our aliens. One, two, three, four, five, six. These are moving up here. And now let's go check on that one that's next to the APC. This one's banging and clawing and trying to get into this room. And let's see if he does. Newt's probably screaming right now. And he got a six. He broke down the barricade. That's terrible. All right. He's able to get rid of that barricade. A couple things are going to happen now that the alien has broken down that barricade. The first thing is Ripley does have line of sight to this blip. So we're going to go ahead and reveal the blip and see what we get. Oh, it's in two aliens. All right, well, that's going to be okay. All right, we got our little standee here with our extra alien. We're going to put them right there. It's better than five. Now, the other thing that's going to happen is this is, I'm a little, not exactly sure if this is exactly right. Please let me know in the comments below how this works. He broke down the barricade. Now, in the rules, it says that if he would end his movement and try to break down the barricade, but he's doing his activation next to the barricade. I don't see why this alien wouldn't be able to then move into here to be able to start attacking these characters. The reason I say that is because otherwise, I could have just left Ripley here, and Rip, or, and, or actually, I could have left her right here. Ripley could have moved over next action and just barricaded the door again. If I'm wrong about that, please let me know in the comments below. But it, I could very well be wrong, and I'm, but I'm going to move him in because I think that's way more fun. Not only that, it's a little thematic. He breaks through the thing and jumps into the APC where all these Marines are. Oh, look, Gorman's pretty upset. He's going to go ahead and turn around. He might even shoot his pistol. We'll see how it goes. All right, that's the end of our alien movement, except for one thing. We have now revealed a new alien, and he is going to activate as well, I believe. He's going to go ahead and move six spaces. One, two, three, four, five to right here. Now, of course, he can't move through aliens, so he's going to stop right there. Oh, we've got a lot of problems to deal with in that APC. Next, we're going to go ahead and activate our blips. We're going to start with this one over here. He's going to move five. One, two, three, four, five. That seems to be the magic number. Hopefully, this is not a five. Oh, it is a five. Wow. <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and take five aliens here and place them down the board. One, two, three, four, five. It's right here. I put a stack of four with then a big alien on top. Wow, unbelievable. All right, we're going to go ahead and move our next set of blips, which are these two right here. Let's see what they do. Five, wow, the magic number. Okay, this, from what I can tell the way this is drawn, this does protrude, so they do have to move around it. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. They're coming up slowly. They're going to be able to see pretty soon. Oh, no, I don't want more aliens. When I moved the aliens into the APC, I should have actually done the defensive fire right then before I moved any of the other aliens. That's my fault, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and see what we can do about this alien in this APC. He's going to, I'm going to have him attack Gorman. He's going to go after Gorman. That's what this alien is going to do. So Gorman gets to make a defensive fire. Now, the only gun he has, of course, is the pistol. So he's going to go ahead and see if he can take out an alien. 
he has a four on his aim dial. So this thing always hits on a three or less, but it still gets to fire at the aim dial. So let's see if we can take out this alien. He got a four. Yes, he was able to take out one of the tokens here. So the swarm is no more. It's just a single alien. And this dial is going to go down to a three, but that's okay. His pistol always hits on a three. And when it makes its second attack, it exhausts a card. So we're going to go ahead and exhaust a card and see if we can take out this alien in the end. We got a one. He did. He took them both out. Wow. Great shooting, Gorman. I guess <laughs> being staring at the computer monitor long enough made you actually go ahead and attack. Now, that's kind of cool because we might be able to go ahead and take this guy out on our own. And then we maybe can barricade that door again next turn. We are going to drop his dial down down to a two we have to do that but I think it's going to get back to where it is before anything else happens to him we're going to go ahead now and move into our motion tracker cards the bane of my existence and in all the commotion and fun that's happening inside this complex I totally forgot about Hudson's motion tracker I guess he was just too busy trying to fire off that grenade all right we're going to draw four in this first one I'm already pretty scared of it's a false alarm. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. All right, we're going to go ahead and recycle the top card of our exhaust deck back into our endurance deck. That's our first card. Our second card looked equally bad. Oh, you can't get lucky twice. They are coming. After you place this card's blips, move all blips and aliens four squares towards the nearest character. <gasps> that's going to be very, 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 very bad. Very bad. Okay, that's a terrible card. All right, that's our second one. We have to draw two more still. We found a lurker. If this blip is placed on a spawn within line of sight of a character, it immediately moves four spaces. Oh, sorry, not placed. All right, I'm going to put that one there. And I got one more. Please, I want another false alarm, false alarm, false alarm. They mostly come out at night. Mostly. Place two blips on each tunnel token and, and spawn space. Oh man, I think the I think that's his game over, man. All right, we're gonna go ahead and see what we can do about these cards. The first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and spawn two blip tokens on number four. So we're gonna put one here. I'm gonna put one back here, and it'll be as far away from me as possible at this point. Now, of course, the rest of the card is absolutely dr dr oh, it's just terrible. All right, it's a barf card. This card is all barf. It says place or now I have to move all aliens and blips four squares toward the nearest character. I don't know how we're going to make it out of this. This one's going to come one, two. This one's going to come one, two, three. They're both going to go after Frost. We now have to take our defensive actions against this again. We're going to go ahead and first start with Frost. Since he's the one being attacked, we're going to start with this alien right here. He's got his pistol. His pistol's going to go, it's already at a one, so it doesn't matter there. He needs to roll a three or less to take out that alien. Let's see how he does. He did not do it. He can exhaust a card to make a second attack action with this pistol. So let's go ahead and do that. We failed again. Now at this point, we could go ahead and have the other two try to help with defensive fires. We're going to go ahead and start with Hicks. Hicks is going to use his shotgun. It go ahead and hits on a five or less. Oh, I'm sorry. I think it has to be Vasquez next because she's the closest one. But is she going to hit Frost with her gun? No, she's not. She can actually aim at that back end of the square and there. So she's okay. She's going to have to exhaust two cards to fire this smart gun. So we're going to go ahead and exhaust the two cards. She needs a seven or less in order to do it. Let's roll up two dice. Come on, Vasquez. You can save your friend. You totally saved your friend. That's awesome. All right. We're going to move her aim dial down to six. There we go. <laughs> now we're going to go ahead and we have to do another the defensive fire against this alien. So we're going to go ahead and roll our pistol. We got it. We were able to take out that alien as well. Oh man. All right. We took out both of those guys. His aim dial is not going to move at all. It's already at one. Sadly, there's some real bad news up here in the APC. This alien is going to come in and attempt to take out Gorman again. Gorman does only have a two on his aim dial, but that's okay. He's firing that pistol. He's going to roll a three or less. He got a ten. Totally failed. We're going to go ahead and exhaust the card and see how he does. We're going to go ahead and roll again. He got a two. All right. He was able to take out one of those. That's the end of his defensive fire. His dial is at a one. Doesn't matter, though, because his pistol always hits on a three or less. Now we have Ripley. Ripley can do a defensive fire attack, and she might as well. She's going to use her pulse rifle, which means she is going to exhaust one card, and then she's going to go ahead and make the attack. She needs a five or less. Let's see how this goes. She got a four. She was able to take out the alien. All right, actually, to tell you the truth, all those aliens moving up and attacking wasn't the end of the world because we actually cleared out a lot of aliens, and we didn't actually lose any guys, so that actually helped us out, that card. Now, of course, we still have to continue moving the rest of these aliens and stuff.
This swarm of five does move six, one, two, three, four, five, six, just out of reach of that flamethrower. So I'm gonna have to move with him first to flame something. Oh, that's too bad. All right, one thing I've learned about this flamethrower, it wouldn't be a bad idea to actually have your hero char character holding onto this flame unit because I always have to activate one of them first. They might shoot a couple of these, but then I can activate the flamethrower to actually go after them. So maybe in our next scenario, I might give one of our heroes a flamethrower and see how it goes. We do still have to move our blips because that's also part of this card. It does say you have to move uh, all blips and aliens four squares towards the nearest character. All right, first off, did this wrong. It's only four squares, not six. There we go. So he's right there. Now he's not even close enough for that flamethrower to even be a matter. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and move the blips four spaces. These blips move one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. All right, then we're going to go ahead and move the other two. These are going to move four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. And of course, they're both going to be revealed because they are able to be seen by Hudson. So we have an alien group of two. I'm going to put those down right here. And then our second alien group is one. All right. Oh, good. A little bit less than five. That five is just out of control. All right. That is the end of our first card. That was just the first card. We're going to get rid of that. It might have been the second. The first one might have been that all clear card. Our second card, of course, is our alien lurker. So we're going to put one at two. If this blip is not placed on a spawn point within line of sight of the character, immediately move four squares. So number two, we're going to get a blip. Good news for us, it is placed in a place where there is a line of sight. So we've gone ahead and four aliens. Oh, wow. Okay, we got four. We need the grenade back. <laughs> I need to shoot with a grenade. All right, we got one, two, three. Almost put an extra one on there. And we're going to go ahead and place an alien figure on top. That is a swarm of four. Oh, man. All right, that is the end of our third card. That one is done. Now we're going to go ahead and resolve our last card, which I think is probably going to kill us. Place two blips in each tunnel token and spawn point. Barf. All right, let's go ahead and place two right here. There we go in four. We're going to place two in three. We're going to place two in number two, which is right here, which I'm going to just go ahead and reveal. Three and two, I was going to put them in that order, so we're going to put three right here. Let's go ahead and put those aliens down. One, two, one, two, and the other one, did I say is four? It's not, it's two, okay, and one right there. Put a couple aliens on top of those. Oh my gosh, there's aliens everywhere. Oh my gosh, they're coming out of the walls. They're coming out of the walls, let's book. All right, then let's see what else we have to do. We have to also play, oh, we have to place them in number one as well. Two blips in one, and they do have that pit, or that, was it, the tunnel token. We have that as well, we have to put blips in. Here's that tunnel token that was right next to Hicks. We're going to go ahead and put one here. We're going to put one behind it. Now, again, when I'm drawing these cards, I should have remembered to say who was drawing which first because you never know they could have actually played a role into what have happened to one of our characters. I have to remember to do that. Hicks is going to go ahead and keep his activation token. We're going to reset our aim dial to 7, and then he may draw an endurance card. He is totally going to do that. Let's see what we have found. We have found... Oh, an M41A Pulse Rifle, also known as something that I can discard to make myself reroll my roll. That's awesome. We're now going to go into his activation, his turn, his actions. But now remember, I could put this on any person within two squares of me that needs a weapon, let's say, for example. But I'm not going to. Everybody's doing just fine. We're going to continue on. Oh, hopefully we can get through this. We're going to see. This could be pretty interesting. I've got a plan, but it involves being lucky. And in this game, I've so far noticed those dice aren't exactly on my side. Our first action with Hicks is we are going to move. That's right. One, two, three, four to right here. And then we're going to go ahead and move again. I know this could be pretty bad, but I've got a plan. It's not a great plan, but it might be a plan. One, we're going to move up here. Now, according to this scenario, I can roll a die and see if we make it past this alien. We got a six. And according to our pass-through rule here, on a result of six or lower, the character may pass and by unharmed and complete the rest of its movement. Otherwise, the character stops and loses further actions and activations, which have been terrible. So he's gone ahead and moved one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. He's gonna move all the way up to here, totally running right by that alien. The reason I'm doing this is because there's a whole flood of aliens just right there, which are bad news. We're gonna go ahead and activate two grunts. He's the first grunt, I've got a plan. One, two, three, four. He's gonna move right there. He's going to move right there, and now what he's going to do is he is going to actually activate his M240 flamethrower. 
he can go ahead and do this. He's going to exhaust two cards to make an attack. So we're going to go ahead and take the top two cards of our Endurance deck and exhaust those cards. And now he may choose to make an attack with this weapon. He can choose a space that's two spaces away from your character and in line of sight. Remember, these guys do not block line of sight. The space I'm going to choose is this one right here. I'm going to choose that space and engulf everything in this area in flames, including one, two, three, four, five aliens. All right. I'll need a seven or lower. So the way these dice are rolling for me, I'll probably get one of them. Let's see how it goes. I got a six and a five. Oh, we've already beaten the odds. We got two of them already. All right. Now, as I say beat the odds, I say beat these dice odds. All right, let's see how this keeps going. Oh, we got a nine and a three, so one of them is still alive, and there's only one left to fire at. I've rolled four times. I get to roll one more time. Oh, no, I got an eight. So I did take out three of them. That's not too bad. And that's the end of his turn. Now, he also has that ability that allows him to, after shooting the flamethrower, reveal a card. And he also resets his aim dial to five, but it goes to four. Now that he's fired his flamethrower, let's reveal our card. We revealed an equipment card, which means I am able to recycle a card. So we're gonna stick this one onto the bottom of our endurance deck. And we're gonna recycle the top card of our exhaust deck onto the bottom of our endurance deck. Oh, or at least we're able to keep our cards cycling pretty much this time, which is pretty cool. We're gonna go ahead and put that back. He doesn't need his aim dial anymore because well, he's next to this alien. All right, we're gonna go ahead and move the rest of our guys. This is gonna be absolutely terrible. I, I was really hoping he would take out every one of those guys. I get to activate one more grunt. I'm gonna activate Hudson. He's gonna go one, two, three, four. One, two, he's gonna to attempt to run by this alien to see if it works. Yes, it does, three, four, though he's still right next to him, but that's okay. I need to get one, two, three, four, five, six. I need to be in that square for these aliens on this side not to attack me, but that's not gonna happen now because this alien's still here, and he's going to do something to somebody, because unless I have Vasquez fire, but that's not going to work. All right, I got a plan. We're going to leave Hudson right here. That's going to be the plan. One, two, three, four. He can run up to here. She can run up to here and attack that alien. I think that's what we're going to do. Hudson's going to move from here all the way to here with his two actions. Now we're going to move into Vasquez's turn. Vasquez is going to reset her aim dial to eight. With the dial reset, she's going to activate her on activation ability, which means she's going to reveal a card. She has found an I a weapon card that couldn't have came at a better time. We're going to go ahead and put that at the bottom of our cards. We have the reshuffle card that has appeared again, so we're going to go ahead and give these cards a good old truffle shuffle. With these all shuffled up again, we're going to continue on. She's going to go ahead and get her aim dial to go to nine because that is that I weapon card we revealed is allowing us to give ourselves a free aim action. She's now going to move one, two, three, four to here, and she's now going to activate her M56 smart gun. She's going to go ahead and attack with a nine or less, but first she has to exhaust two cards to fire the smart gun. She needs a nine or less. She got a nine and a one. She took out one. She's now going to activate her full auto by exhausting yet another card and roll two dice and see how this goes. Uh, yes, she took out both of them. All right, they're both dead. Now, of course, we have a lot of big problems coming up behind us, but that's the end of her turn. She gets to activate now up to one grunt. And I think she's going to activate Newt yet again. She's a big fan of activating Newt. And Newt is going to go ahead and rest. One, two, three, one, two, three. Two actions of rest gives us six cards back into our endurance deck, which is pretty good. Now, we do have two more grunts we have to activate. We're going to activate Gorman next. He's going to do a double rest, putting the last four cards from our endurance deck into, or sorry, our exhaust deck into our endurance deck. And we're going to go ahead and put our reshuffle card down as well. And that card should have gone in before those other exhaust cards. So our reshuffle card goes in there, and the 10 cards from our exhaust deck go on the bottom. Now we're going to go into Ripley's turn. She's going to move over here and again, attempt to barricade this door. I think that's awesome. She got tech skill of five. Let's see how this goes. She got a five. She was able to barricade the door. Yes. All right. We're going to put this barricade back in front here. Super excited to be able to barricade this APC. It's keeping these people alive. Oh my goodness. All right. That's the end. It's going into the alien's turn and this is going to be a really interesting turn. We've got a whole bunch of aliens coming at us, and before I do anything, I have to tick Vasquez's dial down to an 8. I forgot to do that after she fired her second shot at this alien group over here. We're going to move this one first. It's the closest. One, two, three, four, five, six. It can get to these, and there's one, two, three, four of these aliens. Oh, we're going to see how this goes. This could be really bad. All right. 
This is going to go ahead and attack Hudson. I'm going to have it attack Hudson. Hudson's going to be able to use his pulse rifle. And again, I have I failed to remember to use the motion tracker card. Oh, I'm getting real bad at this. Oh, there's just so much going on. And I keep forgetting about the equipment and everything these characters have. That would be really fun. All right, we're going to see what we can do. We are going to exhaust a card in order to fire our pulse rifle. He's got an aim dial of six. We're going to see how this goes. Fire it up. He got a two, he took out one of the aliens. We're gonna keep this going with full auto. He's gonna exhaust yet another card. Tick this down to five and fire again. Oh, he got an eight, he missed. That's the end. All right, he was only able to take out one. That's okay, we have Vasquez now. Vasquez is gonna save the day. Come on, Vasquez, save the day. She's got her aim dial at eight. She's gonna be firing her smart gun. So she's gonna be exhausting two cards in order to do this. She's gonna roll up two dice, see how she does. She got a star and a seven. She was able to take one out. She's gonna drop her aim dial to a seven. Exhaust her card, Does turn this gun into a full auto gun. See how she does here. Oh, oh yeah, I got a six, so I thought that was a nine. I thought that was a nine. All right, she was able to take out the second one. We're gonna continue on, take our dial down to six. We're gonna exhaust another card for a full auto. Roll two dice, see how it goes. We got a star, yes, we took all of those aliens out. Oh, woofta. I have to tell you, this is really, really, <laughs> it, most of the time in dungeon crawlers, I, in games like this, you try to actually take these things out at a distance so that you don't have to worry about them running up and maybe getting you. But in this game, it's so hard. My heart is just thumping whenever these things come running up and there's nothing I can do. And I just hope that I'm able to take these guys out with my guns. But we were able to do it. Oh, that was so good. All right, and we're going to move the rest of our character aliens here. This one's going to move one, two, three, four, five, six. It's not going to be able to get us, thank goodness. This one moves one, two, three, four, five, six. Also not going to be able to get us. That's fantastic. These up here are going to move one, two, three, four, five, six, right around the corner. Where's that grenade again? One, two, three, four, five, six, right to here. Wow, maybe it's, I could do, I could do the sacrifice frost maneuver where I move him here and target here and here I hit all these guys. And if he doesn't kill them, well, you know, he sacrificed for us. The rest of you guys run this way. <laughs> not very noble of me, and I'm probably not going to do that. But look at all of these blips that have to move now. And we're going to start on this tile since it's already ready to go. Let's see here. We're going to see how far these move. Come on, one. Oh, yeah, two. That's pretty good. One, two. And these are going to move. One, two. One, two. These can't move through each other. I should move that one first before that one. So just to do that to make sure I do it right. One, two, and one, two. There we go. These are going to move two. One, let's see what's the closest Marine now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven to get to the APC. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen to get to Hicks. I was so close. One, two, and one, two. They're moving up. Now these, of course, are going to move one, two, and one, two. I'm a little scared of those because those are going to turn into aliens next turn and they might be able to get us. But of course, they don't move to. They're on their own separate tile. I have to go ahead and roll and see if, oh, they go six. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're gonna move up here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wow, okay. They're gonna totally be in Jason to Hicks, to Hicks here. He's gonna be very sad. Now, the way this works is these, as they come running out of here, which a six, this is just terrible. One, two, three, they are now spotted by Hicks. One, two, three, these are spotted by Hicks. All these are gonna be spotted by Hicks. They are actually gonna reveal themselves. Let's see what we found. We found a group of three. I need ones and twos, not threes. There's a group of three right here. Here's another one. It's a group of two, terrible. All right, here's what's gonna happen. These are gonna continue their movement with their six movement according to their blip die. And as they move, they are gonna actually kind of become aliens now. Well, not that they weren't before. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one moves right to here. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one's gonna to move to here. This one is actually here, but they still both get to this place no matter what. And it does say that when, after a blip has been spotted and resolved, the alien model will complete its movement and attack if possible, just like during the alien step. So this thing is gonna be able to attack Hicks. All of these aliens are. This is bad news. Hicks is able to use his gun to do some defensive fire here, but this could get really bad really fast. We're gonna go ahead and exhaust a card to fire his M41A pulse rifle at this group of three. That's gonna be who he's gonna go after first because that would have been the first revealed token. And then the second, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm gonna do about this. All right, we're gonna go ahead and roll, see how we do. We got a seven, all right, oh, just enough. We were able to take out one of them. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna full auto till I can't anymore. We're gonna go ahead, go down to a six, 
and we're going to see what happens. Exhausting yet another card to see if we can defensive fire again. We got a one. We took out another one. We're going to defensive fire, or tick the dial down to five. Defensive fire again. We have failed. He's going to go ahead and exhaust this M41 a pulse rifle once a turn to reroll his attack die. And he got a two. He was able to take out this entire swarm of three. That's awesome. Now, of course, he has this swarm of two he has to deal with. So he's going to continue his defensive fire. He's going to exhaust yet another card to fire his M41A pulse rifle. And he got a 10, and that's it. It's all he can do. Oh, no. All right, we do have to take his dial down to three, though, even though he's just pretty much going to be bad news. Now I have to go ahead and do a defensive against this thing. Let's see how this goes. He's got a six defense against this swarm of aliens who are going to get plus one. He also is carrying his shotgun, and for the first time, this shotgun is going to be bad news for him. And now I think about it, I probably should have used the shotgun. Now that I look at it, this weapon may only target model as within three spaces of this character. This weapon always hits on a five or less. Exhaust one card when you take attack action with this weapon. Oh, well, that was my fault. I maybe should have used the shotgun. Though the pulse rifle does have full auto, so I would have been able to maybe take out both of them. That's okay. This is going to attack him. We're going to roll our defensive roll. We got a four. Now I have to subtract one from my defense roll. So you gain negative one to your defense roll. Does that mean it goes to a three? I think it goes to a three because I have negative one. So it's going to go to a three. Then they're going to gain plus one because they have an extra token. So that's four. So I got a four. So my defense is six. It didn't hit me. It missed. It still stays right where it is, but it did miss its attack. Wow. Okay. That's the end of those blips. Hoofta. We're going to go ahead and we have a couple more blips left to move. These are the last two blips. Let's see how far they, they only go one square. They're my favorite blips ever. Oh, I love these blips. These are my favorite blips. They're going to go ahead and move just like that. Of course, I forgot to use my motion tracker, and that first card does not look fun. Now, I have to remember, I have to choose who is drawing first. I'm going to go ahead and have Vasquez, I think, draw her cards first. She's going to go ahead and see because well, these look really bad, and if anything is next to her, that's okay because i got a whole bunch of people around her, not around Hicks. What did we see? We have found they're in the ceiling. Oh, man, here they are. Okay, it says... Place a tunnel token in a square that is within line of sight and next to this character. Reveal a card. Place two blips on this tunnel. Place three blips on all tunnels. Barf. All right. We're going to go ahead and put two in number three. Then I'm going to place a tunnel token down. Okay. We're going to put this card aside. We'll do all these in the right in, the, in order, but I want to see what they all are first. Our next one turned off the lights. How could they turn off the lights, man? They're animals. Players must choose to either exhaust eight cards or discard a shoulder lamp or flare equipment card equipped to a character. Oh, I totally wish I would have kept their flare. All right, we're going to have to deal with that. Now it's Hicks's turn. Oh, Hicks has a nice card. Oh, he got a false alarm. Good work, Hicks. All right, we're going to go ahead and recycle a card. That is awesome. Now I could choose to do one from my hand if I want. No, I have to do one from the exhaust pile unless it actually says I can do it from my hand. All right. Let's hit the next. Oh, and another false alarm. Okay, we only got two really bad cards. They're both for Vazgas, but that's okay. And it only is going to affect her because that tunnel token is going to come out. Let's go ahead and look at the tunnel token really quick. It does have say that I'm going to have to draw a card. So let's go ahead and draw a card and see what happens. Well, something's going to happen because those are the only four types of cards you can draw. Let's see what happens. I have got an event. All right, we're going to go ahead and said to reveal the card. So we're going to go ahead and place it down. Now, if I were to be play, revealing cards with the motion tracker deck and I would have got the hazard, you do not resolve the hazard instead. This is the only time you don't. But we're going to go ahead and place two blips on this tunnel and two blips on number three. Oh, yuck. And, of course, we do have to deal with this lights out one, too. We're going to place our tunnel token. I think we're going to place it right. Oh, I don't know where to place this. This is going to be bad news. Not where I put it. It's going to be terrible. Put it right there, I guess. That's going to be the plan. No place two blips, which means I have to put aliens there. Yeah. Or I can put it here. I think I like it better here. All the aliens are back there then. We'll just do that. It's not the greatest plan, but it's a plan nonetheless. All right, we're going to put that there. We're then going to put two blips on the tunnel token, which means we're going to reveal them. And the one on the tunnel is going to be one, and the one next to the tunnel is going to be two. All right, we're going to go ahead and place those aliens. So we have a one here. 
and we have a swarm of two right here. This is absolutely epic. Not only where you have all these aliens chasing us down, these aliens have come from underground and above us too as well, and they're coming out of everywhere. They're in the ceilings, they're, they're coming out of the, uh, the walls, oh my gosh. All right, we're gonna go ahead and discard this one. Oh, I do have to put two blips at number three as well. So let's go ahead and place one here and one there. Now we have to place this one. Turn off the lights. Players must choose to either exhaust eight cards or discard a shoulder. Okay, I have to exhaust eight cards. So let's go ahead and grab eight cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've exhausted eight cards. That was kind of brutal, but that's okay. So far with those guys in the APC, I'm able to get some of those back. I do have to put two blips, though, in area number one. Now we know that area is just off camera, but I'm gonna go ahead and place them there. And that's it. That's the end of our motion tracker cards. Oh, I don't know how it couldn't have gotten any better than that. That was actually not too bad. There you have it. I think before we move into the next turn, I am going to stop the video right here. I know huge cliffhanger. Look at all these aliens coming out at us. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Now, I do want to clarify something before we get too much further. From what I understand, when these blip tokens come out of this tunnel, they're not actually going to attack our characters down here like this one did as it ran around the corner. The difference is the blip movement has already happened and the blip tokens are spawning based on those motion tracker cards. If I'm wrong about that, please let me know, but that's, I believe, how this is played. So we have a ton of aliens down here just basically ready to maul our entire group. Hicks is out on his own over here. Hopefully he can come back and maybe save the day, but there's such a big choke point here. It's so hard to get a lot of shots going down this corridor. All right, we have a blips everywhere. Of course, our APC is actually somewhat safe right now, though these blips are probably going to start coming that way yet again. We'll see if they can hold, hold their own while the Marines come around. What an amazing game. I just love the claustrophobic feel that I have trying to get through these and the heart pounding whenever these aliens actually land next to you and all you have left is defensive fire to see if you can actually hold your own. If you did enjoy the playthrough, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell symbol so you know when the second part of the mission comes out so you can see if our Marines make it or are they going to lose to these aliens. It's unbelievable how many aliens just keep coming and coming. But, well, after all, I am in their, their lair, so I guess they're going to be everywhere. Also, please feel free to leave anything in the comments below. I would love to hear from everyone. Again, thank you so much for watching. And if you're excited to see the conclusion of Mission 2 and even going into Mission 3, then if we make it through Mission 2, <laughs> who knows, we might not make it out of the reactor room, then I need you. Meet me at the co-op shop.